Hello and welcome to Talking Europe. It's an election result that has sent shockwaves across the EU. Beating all expectations, the Dutch far-right Freedom Party has won 37 seats, well ahead of its rivals. It's led by a man who's long been the bête noire of European liberals and Muslims. Hert Wilders advocates what he calls the de-Islamization of the Netherlands, as well as zero asylum seekers and tougher border management. Well, migration and asylum is one of the key policy areas of my guest today. Margaritis Ginas is a vice president of the European Commission, and you see, he's coordinating the Commission's work on a new pact on migration and asylum. Mr. Ginas is in charge of promoting the European way of life, and that includes leading the Commission's fight against anti-Semitism, which is, of course, a very topical issue that we will come to as well in this interview. Uh, Vice President, thank you so much for being uh, my guest. It's great to have you back on the show. Um, let's start with the result in the Netherlands, this surge for the far right. Is it a setback for the European way of life? Well, this remains to be seen. 25% um, of uh, Dutch voters voted for uh, Gerrit Wilders, but 75% uh, didn't. So when the government will be formed, the first thing that would be uh, quite interesting to see is whether all this uh, hate rhetoric that uh, shaped his campaign will be translated into uh, a government program. That we don't know yet. So I would very much like to uh, give the next government a chance uh, to see whether uh, uh, their government program will reflect this uh, hate speech that we have been uh, hearing during the campaign. In any case, uh, the European model of society is fully incompatible with any form of discrimination or hate. You have tools to combat uh, online uh, hate speech, be it terrorist content, anti-Semitism or anti-Muslim content online. All of that is in the context of the 2020 anti-racism action plan. So if you do see the, these things that we heard in the campaign being translated into action, I, I guess you have uh, safeguards to respond to that. Absolutely. We, we now have uh, more tools and better tools to cope with uh, hate rhetoric, with radicalization, uh, with uh, fake news in, in online. Um, we have uh, not only the uh, uh, legal text that you mentioned, but we also have our landmark regulation, the Digital Services Act, which are the European rules for governing the digital uh, world, uh, enacted uh, recently under this commission uh, by my colleague Thierry Breton. And now we can react. We can fight all these uh, uh, pathologies. Uh, we can force the platforms, the technological platforms, to cooperate. We have very important regulatory uh, instruments in our hands. Um, Commissioner, obviously people do feel that they're not being heard on migration issues, and that's a big reason why they vote for these kinds of parties. Uh, you want to complete the uh, Europe-wide <laughs> Pact on migration and asylum. Just give us a quick update on where that stands. I, I gather one of the most complex parts of it, that the returns directive is still being blocked. Is that correct? Well, let me first say that everything we do not like about migration in Europe is the direct consequence of the fact that we do not have a European migration and asylum policy. We have tried many years in the past to, to establish this regulatory framework, and let's face it, Europe failed. Mm -hmm. So now, after decades of failures, we have a, a historic, I would say, opportunity to get it right. Our proposals for an EU pact for migration and asylum are now being finalized through uh, interinstitutional trilogue discussions between the Commission, the European Parliament and the Council. 
We uh, have made a huge progress. Uh, indeed, we still have a pending issue on our proposal for more expedite returns, which we think is an important part of the overall policy mix. And this is where the but Parliament dis am... disagrees, doesn't it? The, the Parliament is sort of uncomfortable with this Co aspect. Correct. I mean, uh, more than disagreeing, I think the Parliament. This is the only part of the proposals where Parliament has has yet to produce uh, a mm -hmm. common position that will then be agreed by the Council. Although we now have rules for returns, on the table we have put a proposal for a more expedite uh, system for returns. Mm -hmm. So, overall. I'm optimistic, I'm confident we are getting there, and this will be one of the main elements of the overall legacy of the von der Leyen Commission before Europeans go to vote next June in the European elections. And another important element of this is legal pathways into the EU. Uh, your commission has launched, uh, It's in France it's been called a tender for work. I don't know if that's quite the right way of calling it, but it's matching migrant skills with skilled shortages inside the EU. It, how is it going to work? Is it actually going to be an app or how, what is it exactly? Uh, uh, European system, it's a platform that would allow us to uh, publish uh, vacant positions in our member states identified with the help of the European Employers Association in key areas that are vital to the uh, competitiveness of the European economy, green, digital transition, but also agriculture, tourism, hospitality, healthcare. And then the platform would allow for matches from third country uh, job seekers, especially from the countries of origin and transit of migratory flows. And the idea would be to establish in the platform this match between mm. offer and, and available expertise. Uh, uh, and then the system will be a voluntary system, will notify the member state in question whether they would be interested to issue working visas for these people mm. to come over. And work. That presumably requires a big outreach in third country so that people know that this thing even exists, because they might not have, might not have heard about it even. Yeah, don't worry. I think they will know <laughs> in my extensive uh, traveling to, to third countries. I think that this is coming out very strongly. Uh, and the early signs after we pre pre presented this new platform uh, a week ago are very encouraging. Yeah. That would help us, as uh, Jean-Claude Juncker used to say, to open a door into the house so that people can stop jumping from the windows. Oh, yes. I, I remember this analogy of different uh, stories that we used before. But l let's come on to a somewhat darker uh, issue, uh, Commissioner Schinas. Uh, the anti spike in anti-Semitism around Europe. As I said, this is covered by your portfolio and you signed a statement at the beginning beginning of November uh, saying that the the spike in anti-semitic incidents has reached extraordinary levels reminiscent of some of the darkest times in history European Jews are again living in fear uh, you said uh, you do have a, a an anti-semitism strategy that you set out in 2021 um, it, it, is this strategy uh, seeing uh, some sort of failure given the increase in anti-Semitic incidents. It's actually a threefold increase in France, um, according to interior ministry figures. No, I would say that quite the contrary. Uh, the strategy is now giving us the necessary tools to cope with a situation which uh, uh, risks becoming a, a major issue, uh, depending also on the events in the Middle East. We are seeing this uh, rise in anti-Semitic incidents across the European Union, but our member states now have national plans to fight against anti-Semitism. We have additional resources that we'll deploy for the security of the places of worship and, and schools. We want to protect our Jewish communities in Europe. I, I visited uh, Antwerp, uh, Thessaloniki, Strasbourg, precisely to show them that we are, uh, we're standing uh, next to them. But um, we are equally concerned by the risk of a generalized uh, Islamophobia emerging in Europe. Both uh, uh, these uh, elements of hate are totally incompatible with our way of life, and we are determined to fight politically 
to make sure that uh, the, we do not revisit these dark pages of our history. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like you're putting the um, anti-Semitism and Islamophobia in, in a, almost the same basket. Um, are they not actually quite different? Because anti-Semitism is actually a uh, a criminal act in in European countries. Islamophobia is is perhaps a a hostile mindset. Is it? I mean, a, a kind of different different type of thing we're talking about, perhaps. Yes, this is correct, but at the same time, anti-Semitism would require is is a, a set of initiatives that are already in place after our strategy, uh, whilst Islamophobia is an emerging risk that we need to address with different tools and different instruments, of course. But this is a moment where Europe needs to defend our way of life, the model of society we stand for, uh, the Holocaust is is a stain in Europe's history. We have experienced something that no one wants to relieve, and we want to make Europe a place where our Jewish communities will be happy to live. We'll end it there. Thank you so much for uh, joining me, uh, Commissioner Schinas, Margarita Schinas, in charge of promoting the European way of life at the European Commission. That's all for part one. Uh, my colleague Douglas Herbert will be here in part two with his panel of MEPs talking about violence against women. So do join us after this short break.